You know, I think our best podcasts come from questions from from our listeners. And we have one just a, a week or so ago. I'm a little late, late getting started on this. But so I wanted to do a, a quick hit on this particular topic. The, one of the ones we spoke about not too long ago, we did a, a podcast on creatine. But we had a question from a listener about creatine and the teenage athlete. A quick hit today on the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. Good day and welcome to the Personal Edge Fitness Podcast. This is Garrett Williamson, president of Personal Edge Fitness. Thank you so much for joining us today for this particular podcast. And it's a quick hit, but it's one I wanted to talk about dealing with creatine and the teenage athlete. Now, I'll just let you know how to get in touch with us. If you have any questions dealing with health, fitness, or wellness, you can reach out to us at area code 251-278-3343. That's 251-278-EDGE. You can also reach me at Garrett, G-A-R-R-E-T-T, at personaledgefitness.com. That is also our website and our Facebook page. Hit me up on Twitter at, at @teampe if you uh, are so inclined. Uh, the heck, listener contacted me about about creatine and a teenage athlete. They have athletes involved in several sports, very active, just like we're seeing a lot of uh, teenagers uh, these days. They're going year round in sports. They're doing two a days, heavily heavily involved. And we actually have a podcast coming up dealing with the nutritional needs of a multi sport athlete. And I'll probably touch on this again in that podcast. But I wanted to do a quick hit just dealing with creatine because we're getting that we're getting that question a lot and i want to give you some background on creatine i'm I'm not against this particular supplement but let me let me let me tell you a few facts about it and why i do caution anybody as far as using it with a teenage athlete now does the big question is does does creatine give you an athletic advantage well um creatine users and this is some studies they've done on this but creatine users may may see a modest three to five percent increase in performance now, experts consider this is a, it's a very small amount. I mean, I mean that's a very small amount that they that they see a that they see in that. I mean, up to a five percent increase, and this is especially when it's compared to normal growth and development of young athletes. That is that's very minor. Um, and now, do do keep in mind though, the studies that have been done on creatine have been done on adults. We don't have any we don't have any studies done on 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 teenagers in development for that, and for because of that, there are some there are some concerns as far as um, uh, using creatine with a with a teenage athlete. Now, the the reason I'm so concerned about no studies done on teenage athletes on on creatine, and keep in mind we're only looking at a three to five percent increase in performance. The other, the reason I'm concerned about that they have found some adverse effects of using creatine again. I'm not against this supplement, but just since there, there are not any studies that have been done on creatine and, and teenage use, and it only is a 3 to 5% change, the fact that they have had some adverse side effects should caution you in using that. And the side effects they've had are, are liver and kidney problems, um, also um, dehydration, muscle cramps, and co- what they call compartment syndrome. And this is a problem that prevents blood flow to muscles. Um, compartment syndrome also, uh, you can have that when you have a, a hard hit to the shin muscle, uh, the shin muscle, the shin bone, and actually have a break there. You can, you can cause um, uh, lack of circulation of the foot and have like a foot drop, something that athletic trainers look for uh, in, in injuries quite often. But you can actually have a, the, that same compartmental syndrome associated with the use of creatine. The, um, for a 3 to 5% possible performance change, those those uh, those dangers aren't aren't those those possible injuries possible problems aren't worth that small incremental change. The one that that sticks out to me, and you know why it sticks out to me, because I'm so big on hydration. When you've got forty six percent, in forty six percent of of children, and that's teenagers all, don't drink enough water. Don't not take in enough hydration. Over seventy two percent of adults don't take in enough. And if you heard you're a fan of the podcast, you've heard me say that I think that number is actually a lot higher than seventy two percent. When you already have that problem, then you start adding supplementation of any kind, but especially something like creatine or any kind of any kind of any kind of medicine or what have you, then you're gonna leach even more water out of your system. Now, you take a uh, a multi athlete, uh, multi sport athlete. 
and you you add anything that adds to dehydration. Being a multi-sport athlete, first thing is going to cause is going to put you at risk of dehydration. You can keep hydrated and be a multi-sport athlete or a multi-day training athlete. In other words, doing two a days or long extended workouts, you can stay hydrated, but it's an effort. And it's one that, like I say, 46% of, of, of children don't drink enough water or don't take in enough hydration. So we're already at a risk of dehydration. A lot of the problems in performance are caused by dehydration. And instead of looking at or addressing the hydration uh, situation, we start looking at and listening to a lot of advertisements out there and start looking for supplementation to either build strength or, or, um, or increase energy, energy levels. Another thing about it that back to dehydration and also just having a, a, a proper diet in that you've got enough calories going in. This is what we're going to speak about in the, in the, uh, the, the multi-athlete, uh, multi-sport athlete podcast that I'm going to do on nutrition. Um, first thing we got to know, make sure we have enough calories. And the second thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure we have enough protein going in. If we don't have those things going in, adding creatine is just going to, it's going to do nothing. If it doesn't cause any of these horrible side effects, it's also it's not going to add to your performance whatsoever because you're lacking in either water, enough calories, or enough protein. So what I would do before I even thought about going to so any type of supplementation for that matter is let's look at what we're doing first and foremost. Where's our hydration levels? And you can, it's easy to do and check on that. I've got several podcasts on that, and you can contact me, and I can give you even, even more information on that. But, but you, you, if, you're, if you're, your athlete has a dark urine, what have you, then they're dehydrated, period. And that is going to affect muscle growth. If you're not properly hydrated, you're going to affect muscle growth, which is going to affect performance. And so if you're breaking down muscle tissue in a workout, which I'm certain that you are, if you're having any kind of soreness or getting tired, then you're breaking down muscle tissue. Therefore, you've got to have the proper nutrients and, and uh, amount of nutrients and hydration in order to build all that back. Adding creatine to that situation is not going to help things. So let's first look at what are we doing. If you're interested in knowing the, 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 this isn't just my opinion, the, both the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American College of Sport Medicine, which is where my, uh, my certification is through and also the agency that provides pretty much all the exercise testing out there, uh, information out there for uh, cardiac rehab clinics, for every single certification out there uses ACSM's uh, information, are in agreement that teenagers should not use performance-enhancing supplements including creatine. Now, when it comes to performance-enhancing supplements, I do not pr- put protein supplementation in that list personally because I don't feel that is a performance-enhancing supplement. Things like creatine are labeled as performance-enhancing and ones I think should be cautioned. But again, American Academy of Pediatrics and American College of Sport Medicine both caution people in using, in using uh, creatine and, and, and with teenagers. Best way to approach this? Talk to your teenage athlete about it. Be sure to listen and empathize with their feelings. They're, they're, they're likely under an intense pressure to, to, to perform, and I, I get it. Uh, they're, they're, they're not keeping up with their peers. They're not keeping up with athletes on the field. They're looking for that edge. I understand the reason for going after something like this, but the answer is somewhere else in the recipe. I bet you money. If they're seeing themselves, uh, they're not able to keep up, they're having they're, they don't see them that they're they're advancing the way they should their energy is running down in practice or whatever go back and look go look go back and look at what's the total nutritional intake what is first and foremost look at their hydration i'm telling you that is an easy fix and that is a very 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 common problem that it's rare that i don't find an athlete that's having performance issues that is that is hydrated that is regularly hydrated where they think they they are and many times uh, on that note it's not just out in hot weather i'm not sweating a lot i have to be playing basketball and i'm playing in an air-conditioned gym could be even a worse situation. Air conditioners are a giant dehumidifier. So look at that one first. Look at what hydration first. Then look at calorie intake. Then look at protein intake. And to take it a step further, if you want us to check it out, hey, contact us. We'd be more than glad to do an overview of, of energy expenditure, overview of the workouts they're doing, overview of their nutritional intake without being ugly, without critiquing them or whatever, and help you get a good game plan on making sure that you're hitting – all those, all those metrics the right way. I don't think that a teenager's goal is to take in creatine. A teenager's goal, a teenage athlete's goal, is to get better in their sport. 
And if that's the goal, then let's look at it the right way. Let's look at the recipe that's getting us there. If you have any more questions about that, please reach out. And thank you, thank you so much, Cammy, for that for that uh, question about this particular subject. And be more than glad to speak to to your your athlete, speak to a parent about trying to trying to decipher where we need to go with this. If you have any questions concerning this particular subject or any others, reach out to me at area code two five one two seven eight three three four three. That's two five one. 278 Edge. You can also contact me at Garrett, G A R R E T T, at personaledgefitness.com. That's also our website and our Facebook page. Also, reach out to me at Team PE if you're so inclined. This has been a quick hit on creatine and the teenage athlete. Again, I'm not against the supplement. I'm just in, interested in doing the same thing you are, and that is making your teenager feel better about being themselves, make your teenager a better athlete if that's so inclined, because that is all about reaching their level of wellness, which is what we're all about here. Thank you so much for listening today, and I'll see you next time.